So today we're going to talk about straw. Oyster mushrooms can be grown on straw and I want to show you some examples of good straw versus bad straw. So if you look down here, what we have um, is some nice clean yellow straw. This is prime for growing oyster mushrooms. Uh, you see there's really no green, it's nice and yellow. Typically this type of straw comes from wheat or oat uh, straw. Those tend to be the most yellow and suitable for use. Uh, when we come over here, you can see that we've got some straw. Now this straw is quite weedy, so you can see uh, that you got a lot of green little pieces in there. This can still be used. We've used it to grow oysters, but the thing we notice is that we do run into more contamination problems with this. Uh, it, just a little bit more bacterial development because that green is so rich, nutrient rich, that it really is a prime environment for bacteria. And then if we move over here, what we have is not straw at all. This is hay. So hay you can see is very, very green. Hay is the nutrient rich portion of the crop um, towards the top. This is typically um, um, very nutrient heavy. This is what's used to feed animals as opposed to the straw, which is typically used for animal bedding. Um, so this is much more suitable, not as much nutrients. Uh, so it doesn't, one, heat up too much like the hay does. Um, and also, like I said, that nutrient rich environment is, is um, really conducive to bacterial growth. So this eliminates that. Um, so this is really what you want to use right here. You can use rice straw, you can use rye straw or barley straw. Some of those are, are quite suitable. But once again, we kind of want to look at, if you get your hands on that straw, how much of it is really green? Um, I would say um, if, if it's comparable to looking like this, um, I don't know that I would use this, to be honest. It's a little bit too green. And when we get our, our straw from feed mills, typically here it's wheat or oat. Um, and it, it really depends too on whether it's, um, it's organic or not. A lot of times one of the struggles you'll have as an or organic farm is coming up with a straw that um, is, is nice and yellow yet still organic because organic straw is typically not sprayed for weeds. So this is what you end up with. Um, so, so sometimes to meet your um, organic standards, you will have to use a straw like this. Uh, it will still produce mushrooms. Um, you just may have minimal yield. Now you can see here that we've got, this straw is, is, has been chopped and that's quite ideal for, for using uh, for oyster mushroom production because what the mycelium can do is it can easily jump um, from one piece of straw to the other after it's been packed into your straw bags. Uh, if you use the longer full length pieces of straw, um, it's harder to pack the bags tight. Uh, and you also want to avoid um, pulverized straw or straw that's very, very fine. So see, these are really tiny little bits. If you had a bag that was packed full of these teeny tiny little bits, uh, you end up with way too much moisture content. So you end up with a bag that is very, very dense and heavy with water. And once again, that's conducive to bacterial growth. So we want to use these larger pieces. It's okay if some of these smaller pieces are mixed in with the large, but in general, we don't want to use bits that are, are this small. So we're talking, you know, four, six inch pieces are perfectly suitable.